Multi-category is somewhat different. So multi-category, you're allowed to have one of a set of categories. So in the case of multi-category, you can have just one. So here we might have uh, separate categories of, let's say, let's say it's emotions. So it can be happy, sad, disgusted, scared. All right. So the incoming Y is going to be one of these values. In this case, obviously the guy looks happy, I guess. So in this case, it'd be happy. We can represent this in one of two different ways. We can either represent it as a single value. So let's say it can be 0, 1, 2, or 3. Or alternatively, a common representation is as what's called a one-hot vector. So in this case, there are four different categories. So we would make a vector of size 4. And if it's happy, we represent that one with the first element set. So there's one of these elements in the vector is hot, and the other ones are cold. So one hot vector just sounds more catchy than n minus one cold vector. Sad would be represented like this. Disgusted like this. And scared. So these are the y's. Okay. Y is one of those things. Okay. Now our f. Okay. f is going to give us a set of values between negative infinity to positive infinity. And let's say this means that the higher the number, the more likely it is that particular value, and the lower the number, the less likely it is. Sigmoid would certainly take us into the, the range 0 to 1. Uh, but then we'd need to somehow scale so that we could have a, these represent actual probabilities that sum to 1. We can only have one of these. Okay? We can't have all of them. However, uh, we don't do that. Instead, what we do is we are going to actually take e to the x. Okay? These are going to end up in the range 0 to infinity. And then we are going to scale by the sum. So we're going to actually take the sum of these and scale. And that will give us values in the range 0 to 1, whose total is going to be equal 1. So we can look at this, which will be our y hat, as the probability that it's happy, the probability that it's sad, the probability that it's disgusted, and the probability that it's scared. And those totals will sum to 1. So we might have a particular, let's say y is that it's sad. Okay. And y hat, coming out of our model, might be, let's say, 0 0.1, uh, 0 0.8, 0 0.05, 0 0.05. They do sum to 1, as they should. And now our question is, how do we actually compute the loss? Well, it's relatively straightforward, actually. We the loss is going to be just equal to sum over i of negative y sub i log of y hat sub i. So what we know is that there's only one one in here, right? Because it's a one hot encoding. And so therefore, what this does is say, let's pick out what that y is and find the associated y hat and take the log of that. So basically, all we care about is how close is the y hat value that should be 1 to 1. And we don't care about the rest. So we get the same loss for 0 0.1, 0 0.8, 0 0.05, 0 0.05 that we would for, let's say, uh, 0 0.2, 0 0.8, you know, something 0, 0. Same losses because all we care about is how far away is this guy from 1. So that is multi-category 
classification. This function, by the way, where we're basically saying that the y hat sub i equals e to the f of x sub i over the summation of e to the f of x sub i's. That is, the bottom part is just normalizing, and the top part takes the e. Why do we do that? Right? Well, first there's a name for this. This is called a soft max. Soft because uh, one possibility is we have a hard maximum, right? We just take f here and you say, well, whichever is the largest one, that's going to be one and the rest will be zero. The problem with that, just as we saw with binary classification, is that we, that's not differentiable, right? We don't have any way to know how to make things better, what to increase and what changes will make slight changes. We have this discontinuity that things just flop uh, as we get a new max. One of, that would change to one and the others would change to zeros. Whereas here, we smoothly have a max. So whatever the maximum value is, the e to the x is going to amplify that to a great degree. So let's say f comes out with, uh, oh, let's say 1, 2, 0, negative 1. Okay, so that's f. If we now take uh, e to the f, that's going to be around 3, around 9, uh, 1, and 1 third, right? And then we now take e to the f over the sum of the EDFs, that's going to be, so the total here is 13, around 13, so that's going to be, I'm just roughly saying one quarter, so this is very roughly 0 0.2, 0 0.7, uh, uh, point, what do I get left, 0 0.08 and 0 0.02. Right, and these are, again, very rough. But notice what happened is that the 2 was just sort of slightly bigger than 1. Right? In fact, it's 1 away from 1, 1 away from 0, 1 away from negative 1. So they're all a unit away from each other. And yet as we go over here, they are uh, amplified. So we're amplifying the differences between these. So the, lar the larger one, we are taking them sort of the max. So in the hard max, this would have become 0, 1, 0, 0. This is a softer version, 0 0.2, 0 0.7, 0 0.08, 0 0.02. But notice 0 0.07 is still three and a half times as big as 0 0.2. Okay. So the e to, e to the x um, exaggerates the differences, and then we divide, so we turn into probabilities. And again, name for this is softmax. So if we're doing multi category classification, we'll always add a softmax layer at the end of it, right, to do this, to get us to our probabilities that sum to 1. If we're doing multi-label classification, we'll normally just add sigmoids at the end of our multiple outputs.